Southern's Pigskin Picks for Week 5. I'm Scott Meese alongside Les Winkler and Pete Spittler. Uh, before we get into the picks for Week 5, we got a good slate of games. Let's uh, talk a little bit about last week. Uh, Pete, you're over for a big game. Uh, Heron at Benton, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what you thought about that game. Well, obviously Heron proved that uh, time possession is a key factor in football. Heron had it for more than 32 minutes. And sometimes the best defense is just keeping the ball all the out of the hands of the opposing offense. Heron, I mean, heck, the opening drive lasted nearly eight minutes and took 17 plays. And any time um, the other team has maybe one or two possessions a quarter, it's tough to win games like that. And Heron, you know, definitely showed that they can – they are a serious contender for the postseason, and I think uh, they could have a real successful week again this week. You got to see a little bit of history up at Centralia. The uh, Orphans, uh, 4-0 now, and that offense keeps on rolling. They can really score the points taking down Carbondale. Well, here's the counterpoint to Pete's statement. Um, Centralia proved the time of possession isn't all that. They scored on possessions of uh, long drives in terms of yardage in 54 seconds and another one in a minute 16 seconds. That is an explosive football team. They have a solid defense. They've got three or four kids on offense who are just remarkable talents that they're they're forced to be reckoned with. And Sid Sykic has been putting up all these huge numbers last year and this year, and then this kid they bring in is also an incredible R- R- Rashad, athlete. Rashad Campbell is just an incredible athlete. Uh, Sid, Sid, Sid Sykic, well, that's a hard word to say, um, <clears throat> had some issues with uh, apparently hit his ha- hand on a, on a helmet while completing a pass. And Carbondale had him rattled. He was getting hit and hit hard on virtually every play. And uh, on, on the sidelines was seated all by himself and tossed his helmet a few times. So it was – Carbondale got to him a little bit, but then it was, there was also the hand injury. But, boy, Rashad Campbell is the real deal. He, uh, he made three or four passes that were just right on the money, and he is just an explosive runner. All right, then let's – I, I want to offer a, a point, a counterpoint to your <laughs> counterpoint, and that is not so much the number of possessions as how you use them. Would you agree there, on that? There you go. We, we can agree on that. <laughs> All right, let's get into the picks. We've got Benton three and one, uh, Ohio Division action at Murphy one and three. Um, Les, how do you look at this one? Murphy's improving. I don't think there's any question about that. But Benton's a very solid team. Uh, I think Murfreesboro will have the speed advantage, but I think overall, Benton has uh, skill players. Um, and uh, they'll be good enough to beat Murfreesboro. Pete? Um, I will agree with Benton in this one. I mean, uh, Coach Claude Felder basically told me, you know, there are some things that they did that caught up with them. They were undisciplined at times. They put the ball on the ground at times. I mean, they, they fumbled a uh, the snap on a two-point conversion that could have tied the game against Heron. So if Benton can correct their mistakes from last week into this week, they should uh, win this one. I go with Benton. I'm going to go with Benton, too. I think Murphy's improving. I think they gave Harrisburg a pretty good game from what I hear. They just had, you know, well, both teams had a bunch of bunch of penalties. Apparently they were 30-something called in that game. But I think the Rangers probably have too much offense. We'll see if Murphy can hang around for a while, though. Next up in what would have been the premier matchup of the year in the Black Diamond at the start of the year, Johnson City at Chester. A little different now. Johnson City 3-1. and one. Chester having a tough season so far, 1-3. and three. Uh, Obviously, it's still a big game, especially I think for Chester, because you get to one and four, and you got to run the table to make the playoffs. So that it's going to be a big game. What do you think, Les? Yeah, the the monkey's definitely on Chester's back. Uh, like you said, four losses. That means you have to you have to win out. And in a closed conference, like like the Black Diamond, you will probably almost always make the playoffs with a five and four record. So their season isn't over by any stretch of the imagination. But this is an absolute must win game. Um, Having said that, I still like Johnson City. Um, I still like Johnson City. I'm going to go with Johnson City, too. They've they've uh, struggled a little bit at times. You know that they almost blew it to CZR last week. I think CZR was driving and got down inside the 10 or the 5 as time expired, which would have been the game-winning touchdown. So, And they're still waiting on Kirkman to see if he can come back. But I think Johnson City is probably a little too much. But Chester's usually pretty good at home. They just haven't been this year. Pete, what do you think? Um, obviously, you know, it's a good, like you mentioned, you know, it would be a marquee matchup um, if the records were a little differently. And Chester is dealing with some injuries. They have sophomores in some key positions at this point. But at the same point, you know, Chester traditionally has seemed to play well when they're backed into a corner. And in just momentum's sake, I go with Chester on just because, like I said, you got if if you get that fourth loss, you know, you're pretty much uh, – 
pretty much, you know, like I said, in a corner, and I think uh, Chester will come out swinging in this one, so I'll go with Chester. All right, moving on to the South 7, we've got Cahokia 2-2 two and two at Carbondale 2-2, two and two. so this is obviously, you know, as far as playoffs go, another another big game. Uh, Pete, who, who do you think will come out on top in this one? You know, I saw Carbondale at home against Waterloo. That was a lopsided score that not a lot of us predicted would be so lopsided. And Carbondale just seemed to be able to kind of pull it all together at home. I mean, obviously coming off a tough loss to Centralia um, and, you know, with a team that explosive like Centralia and when you have a team that could be explosive like Carbondale, I just like the athletes that Carbondale has and the capabilities they could put on the field. Well, that's what do you think, Carbondale, Cahokia? I like Carbondale. I, I, they played well last week against the trade. There's a couple, uh, a couple meltdowns on defense uh, against some outstanding athletes. And I'm, you know, I'm not sure that that uh, anyone would have stopped Rashad Campbell or um, or Stephon Tamore on any of those plays. I like Carbondale's size. I, I like their running backs, Bryce Reno Gibson and uh, Cade Kester are both are both big, strong backs. Justin uh, Huffman is is a really polished looking sophomore quarterback. Eli Elfman on defense was a load the other night. So, uh, Cahokia's young. They're struggling a little bit. Go with Carbondale at home. Yeah, I'm going to go with Carbondale, too. Cahokia, they're, they're always kind of difficult to get a gauge on. You know, have they had all their players in these first four games? Who might be back? Um, they got thumped by O'Fallon. That doesn't mean much. So, O'Fallon's one of the best big school teams in the state. And they really put a beating on St. Louis Carnahan. Um you know, I, Cahokia, you never know with them, but I just I don't think they can come down to Carbondale and get a win. I'm going with the Terriers. Uh, in my opinion, what would be the biggest game of the night or the most intriguing would be Anna Jonesboro at Pinckneyville. The Wildcats 4-0 got a big win at DuCoin, a, a fairly lopsided win. They were up, I believe, by three touchdowns in that game. Pinckneyville won their first two. They've lost a couple uh, to Benton and Carterville the last two weeks. Pete, what do you think in the big Mississippi matchup? Um, I think the way Ann Jonesboro, and I guess I mean handled isn't the right word, but just um, beat DeCoin is what kind of resonates the most with me. Uh, going into this season, you know, there was told, oh, Ann Jonesboro, the numbers aren't there, the depth isn't there, you've graduated, you're starting quarterback, starting fullback, what kind of team are you going to have? But I think this is really also the strength of coaching, of Brett Dietering, of being able to, to rally his troops together and get a, a big emotional win like last week. And in the same point, I think they can do it again this week. I mean, yeah, they're on the road, and Pinckneyville is much improved, but anytime you beat DeCoin, especially the way they beat them, you're a pretty good football team. Yeah, Les, what do you think? AJ, you think they uh, can get five in a row here? I, I agree with Pete about Brett Dieter and building a program down there. He's just done a, done a great job year in, year out. They, they're, they're, they're getting to be like DeCoin and, Harris, and the Harrisburgs. They don't rebuild, they reload. Uh, Pinckneyville is, is a much improved football team, but they need to upset – somebody here in the next which couple which they usually weeks. do once a year at least. They, they do but I mean they're, they've got to come up with an upset in, in the next two or three weeks to make the playoffs so uh, they're going to be a dangerous football team but man you can't you can't pick against a 4-0 team yeah uh, you know Anna Jonesboro uh, I think surprised everybody not only that they beat DuCoin on the road but the way they beat him I mean they were they were handling them for the most part DuCoin had a couple of scores I believe in the fourth quarter but Nobody, you know, goes in there all that often. Might happen once a year if you're lucky. Carterville went in there, got him last year by a couple scores, and then Ducoin turns the table in the playoffs and wins 35 nothing at Carterville. So Ducoin, you know, I'll believe Ducoin is not a good football team <laughs> when they lose in the first round of the playoffs, and that probably won't happen. I'm gonna go with AJ. Too much explo explosiveness on offense. Their defense is good too, uh, as long as they can keep shoot from going wild at quarterback out there and. Putting up, you know, triple digits and rushing and passing, I think uh, AJ comes out on top. Uh, final game we're going to talk about: Black Diamond, uh, Carmi, White County, four and zero. Their big rival, Fairfield, three and one. Um, Les, what do you think, uh, Carmi again? Carmi. Well, I just said I can't pick against a four and zero team, so <laughs> here's another four and zero team. Carmi's surprise team of the year. Um, everybody, thought, everybody knew they were going to be better this year, but everybody thought the at least the conventional wisdom was they were a year away. Um, they're a year ahead of schedule. Uh, they might as well win another one. Yeah, I'm going to go with Carmi. Too many, way too many weapons. I mean, they got four or five guys that can put up big numbers. And uh, Fairfield uh, coming off a loss at El Dorado. Uh, I think Carmi goes to 5-0. and oh. What do you think, Pete? I have to go with Carmi as well. I know we were talking about good coaches. Kurt Simon is obviously another one. Knows how to get the most out of his talent. Knows how to get the most out of his athletes. 
Carmel, you know, that Chase Saylor kid can throw, can pass. Definitely does a great job of running this team. And Fairfield, I mean, Fairfield traditionally have had some hard-hitting uh, athletes. They like to play physical football, but speed can beat physical play, and I go with Carmel in this one. Yeah, uh, I, you know, we're all picking Carmel, but when it's a rivalry game and Fairfield Carmel goes back a while, they're close, fairly close together there. You know, I don't think any of us would be surprised if Fairfield no, comes I mean, out and wins this. I mean, it, that's their big game each year. You know, they're on track to make the playoffs again too. But I, Carmel just a little bit too much. And uh, that's it for this week, folks. Check back for week six, and we'll see you next week.